Yes. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So let's get started. So first of all, um, there's a, we have a few new students and a few old students. So for those of who don't know, my, uh, my name is Melvin. Welcome to term four of Loyola classes. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the lessons for the next 10 weeks. So there's a few things I need to get started with, which is just going through a bit of housekeeping. I know you guys just finished school. It's a Friday afternoon. So I'm going to give you two options. Would you guys like me to read the housekeeping rules in a normal voice or like a sarcastic voice? I didn't really mind. Okay. I'll, I'll then in that case, I'll do a sarcastic voice because I'm, I'm bored myself. I think it's a bit funny to do it. So welcome to Loyola Tutoring. Yay. You guys get to do tutoring right after school. Have fun, right? Put your hands up if you guys rather be watching YouTube or playing sports right now. Yeah. Okay. Me too. When I when I was in your when I was in your five, I would rather be playing games and stuff. But it's okay. We we need to um get through this thing, and I'll try to make the lessons as fun as you can. So hopefully you won't feel as bad for the fact that you guys are stuck in tuition. Okay. Awesome. So we hope you enjoy the next ten weeks with us. Just a few things before we get started. Um, the first thing is we will alternate between two subjects each week in class. Make sure to complete your uh sorry before sorry. We will alternate between two subjects each class. So does anyone know what the subjects in GATE are? There's four subjects. Does anyone know? Um, there's quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, writing, and the reading. Uh, yes. So there's quantitative reasoning, which is basically like math and logical reasoning and that sort of thing. There's abstract reasoning, which is shapes and patterns. Then there is reading. Uh, reading comprehension and finally you have creative writing so we have four subjects right and in Loyola we will do two subjects per uh, week so this week today we'll be doing quantitative reasoning and we'll be doing creative writing next week we will do abstract reasoning and reading comprehension do you guys understand yeah. and we'll keep alternating it until the second last week when you guys will do a full length mock exam and you'll do the mock exam online and then um, after that, we will go through the mock exam. Sounds good? Awesome. Make sure to complete your homework before you come to class. If you ever forget your homework is due, you can check the homework outline below. So at Loyola, we like to have a lot of fun in our classroom. So our classes are not boring. Um, hopefully, even though it's online, I'll still make sure that you guys can be loud and, you know, loud and annoying students who just annoy the teacher. But we, we don't want quite boring classes, right? We want to have fun. So I'll try my best to make it fun, but we have two rules. We are very strict about these two rules. So rule number one, does anyone know? My old students? You have to do your homework. Yes, you have to do your homework, right? So does anyone here play sports? Fatima, do you okay. play any sports? Um, I play netball at school. Awesome. So Fatima, here's my question for you. Let's just say you're playing netball for your school, right? And you have a big finals coming up at the end of the year. If you never go to your training sessions, will you ever be on the team? No. Exactly. Why is that? Because you haven't got any training and you won't be as good. Exactly. Similarly, what's the point of coming to Loyola if you're not going to do your homework? You're wasting your mom and dad's money, right? Your mom and dad send you guys to study at Loyola. But if all you do is come to Loyola, laugh at Melvin's jokes and laugh at his face and make fun of him then you won't remember anything, right? By yeah. the way, Ayan and Haranesh are the, you know, famous for making fun of me a lot. Right, boys? Okay. Haranesh seems really quiet today. He's a bit shy. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right. So um, make sure you guys get your homework done. So it's really important because if you don't do your homework, there's no point um, come to class because you won't be able to improve and learn what you're struggling with, right? So a good example is if you never do your writing homework, how can I give you feedback on how to improve your writing? Do you guys understand? Yep. So we're very strict on that. So the first time you don't do your homework, we'll send a letter home. We will send your parents a letter home. And usually, for example, let's just say, I mean, obviously there's reasons, right? So for example, uh, let's just say you are really sick, so you can do your homework. Or for example, your dog ate your homework. Fair enough. You can't do it, right? Or if a tornado blew into your room and destroyed your room, it's fair enough. You can't do your homework. So for those situations, you can explain to your mom and dad saying, oh, mom and dad, sorry, I dog ate my homework. I can't, I didn't, I actually did it. Then, you know, you won't get in trouble. 
But if you didn't do your homework, then you'll have to have a very awkward conversation explaining why you didn't do your homework. Is that right, Gurusas? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, do you understand, Hannah? Hello? Okay, hopefully she does understand. The next rule that we do have, oh, sorry, second time you don't do your homework, we ask you to not come to the following lesson. So if you do, don't do your homework twice, we'll say, all right, please don't come to the next lesson because clearly you're not showing up and doing your work. So what's the point of coming to class? If you don't do your homework three times in a row, we'll ask you to leave Loyola because there's a lot of kids who want to join. And obviously, you know, for the online classes, it doesn't make a difference. But in our face-to-face -face classes, there's a lot of kids who want to join our certain classes and they always usually get fully booked out. So it's unfair for those kids who can't join um, if there's kids who are already in Loyola and not doing their work. In Loyola, we've only kicked out one student because they kept on doing this. And I think he was in your class, right, Gurses? The one boy who's really loud? Yeah, he was from last year. Sorry? I think he was in my class like two times ago. Yeah, yes. So two terms ago, uh, we've only kicked out one student. So he was in Gurses' class two terms ago. He was way too loud and kept disrupting everyone's lesson. So we ended up actually kicking him out. So we're not joking. We will ask you to stop coming because if you're not here to study, then what's the point of coming to Loyola? That's basically it. Do you guys understand? Yes. yes. Second rule of Loyola is that you have, you, you know, only one person can speak at a time. So I know that it can get exciting and it's a bit different in online as well, but please don't disrupt the classroom. So once again, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a student who was disrupting the class in Gursas' class. So let me ask you guys this question. Can you put your hands up if you want to pass the gate exam? Me. Yeah, so all of you want to pass the gate exam, right? How would yeah. you feel if you're trying to learn in the gate class and a student is constantly talking so the teacher has to constantly tell them to be quiet and you can't learn anything? How would you feel? Annoyed. That's right, right. Yeah. Right. So, for example, your parents work really hard uh, to save up money to send you guys to Loyola, and then you can't learn anything because the kid is disrupting the class. You would feel annoyed, correct? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. do you think it's? Do you think that we should, if a kid does that, we should, you know, ask him to stop coming to classes because it's disrupting everyone else? Yeah. So that's exactly what we'll do to you if you guys don't, um, you know, if you guys keep disrupting the class. So, if you disrupt the class, then you'll have the same fate as the student who talks in class will ask you to stop coming because I want you guys to contribute. I want you guys to have fun, but you're here to first learn, not to just have fun. You guys understand? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Next thing is make sure to not lose this booklet. That's pretty funny because how can you lose an online booklet? Right. Unless your computer breaks down, but in that case, we can still send you a link. So don't stress too much about that. Next thing is there are weekly live Q and a sessions every Sunday from five to 6 PM. These sessions are for, questions that you couldn't ask in class or for questions you'd like a tutor to go through again. So for example, let's just say in class, we went through question number two. After we've gone through the question in class, you still have any questions left. You can come on Zoom class and say, hey, uh, Nisani. So Nisani is the other teacher who takes the online class. So you say, hey, Nisani, can you teach me how to do question two again? And then we'll go through it. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. All right. Let's see, what's next? Uh, the Zoom ID is the exact same thing. So you know the link you guys join, used to join today's Zoom class? It'll be the exact same link for the Sunday class as well. Any questions about that? No. Next thing is, I these two are very important things. We need you guys to get your parents to scan both of these uh, enrollment survey links. So all they need to do is if your parents have a, a camera on their phone, just take the camera, point it at the QR code, and once they pointed at the QR code, you just open the link. So this is for the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group is where we send any important information or answer keys. So after each lesson, we will send answer keys. So they need to join using that link. And then we'll also send any general announcements. So for example, again, for the online kids, I mean, okay, let's just say for online kids, right? This Tuesday, we had an issue where we tried to do the online class. And what happened was um, the teacher who was taking that class was Jenny. And she was joining from a new computer and Zoom thought that someone was hacking into our account. So because Zoom thought someone was hacking into our account, they blocked the account for a week. So it was only today that I was able to get back my account. So in a random situation like that, we need to quickly let you guys know that, you know, the Zoom ID has changed or the Zoom logins have changed. So that's what the WhatsApp group is for. So make sure you guys are part of that. Do you guys understand? 
Yep. And the second thing is uh, the enrollment survey link. Again, this is more relevant if you guys are doing the face-to-face -face classes, but we still want this information. So at the moment when your parent, parents enrolled, the only information we have about you guys is what your parents' name is, what your parents' phone number is, and what your parents' email address is. But we need to know what your name is. We need to know if you guys have any allergies. Unfortunately, it's not really relevant because you're online, but you know, it still be useful. And we also need to know like emergency details and just a few other important information that we would like to know. So this is also really important. Make sure you guys fill that in, okay? Yeah. Awesome. And the last bit of information we need to go through is the homework for this week. Sorry, homework outline. So whenever you're stuck and you don't know what your homework is, you can look at this table to find out. So week one, today the classwork is, uh, this is the wrong, this should be quantitative reasoning. So today we will do maths and creative writing. And the homework you'll have this week is reading comprehension, abstract reasoning, and creative writing. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Awesome. Next week in class, we will do reading comprehension, abstract reasoning. And then for homework, you'll have quantitative reasoning and you'll have all the information here. Any questions? No. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Does everyone understand? Yes. Okay. One other thing is I'll quickly show you. If you do miss a Zoom class, we do have every class will be recorded live on YouTube. So you can go watch it on YouTube later. So I'll show it to you here. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course you can. So, oh, sorry, before you ask, as you can see here on YouTube, every week we will post it live on YouTube so you can watch it here. So if you do miss a lesson, you can watch it here. Um, all the old um, videos will also be here. So if you go to videos and you go to uploads, you can watch all previous videos as well. All right, what's your question, sir? Um, so back with the homework. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, you said that it's wrong. It's not abstract reasoning. Then what was it again? Oh, quantitative reasoning. So it's not homework, but oh. in today's classwork, we'll do quantitative reasoning. So maths. Oh, classwork. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got it. All right. Awesome. So if that's it, let's get started on today's lesson. Would you guys be able to grab your notebooks really quickly? Okay. To take some notes. Ready? Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yep. <clears throat> awesome. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions just to understand a few things, and then we'll get started. So the first question that I want to ask you guys is, what is a gate exam? Um, it's a test to see... Like uh, maybe if you want to go into a different school or like to get extra things in other schools. Yep. And yep. what are the subjects that they test you in? Um, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, um, creative writing and reading. Perfect. So there's those four subjects, right? Now, yep. the subject I want to focus on today is creative writing. Can anyone else other than Ayan, can you guys tell me what creative writing is all about? What they're marking in creative writing? It's when they give you a topic and you mm -hmm. have to write either a narrative or persuasive about it. Yep. Perfect. And what are they looking for, Gurses? For how creative you are so you don't use like other ideas. You're Interesting. Yeah. So would you say it's marked the same as math and Gurses? No. Why not? Because um, most... That one's mostly not about how creative you are, but in gate is on the marking key. Mostly it's about that. Perfect, perfect. So I'll show you guys this. 
when your parents sign you guys up for the uh, gate exam, they will go to this parent presentation. So this is the parent presentation that they will take a look at. And if you scroll down, you can see, excuse me, when you get to writing. So when you get to writing, this is what the program has to say about writing. It says that students are presented with a stimulus and instructed to present a well-organized, it's underlined, creative, right? Interesting and original piece of writing. So they're asking you to make, they're focusing on creativity and originality, but also they want it to be well-organized and interesting. There is no restriction on genre or style. So in NAPLAN, they normally tell you to do a persuasive or a narrative, right? Yeah. In GATE, they don't care. You can write a narrative. You can write a blog post. You can write a persuasive. You can write an essay, a speech. You can write um, a Roblox story. I don't know, anything you like, a poem. You can do anything you like. And then it says that it's not differently from NAPLAN writing. So does anyone know what NAPLAN is for? Um. To see so, what your level is at? Kind of, yeah. So you know how the government has to pay for schools in Australia? Yeah. So the government uses NAPLAN as a way to test how... Hi. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, just give me two minutes. I just need to move locations. I'll be right back, all right? Yeah. What the? Sorry, guys. I had um, uni today, and I didn't get to go home to set the class up. So I'm actually in uni building. I'm in a different room, and I'll set it up for you. Right. So two, two, two thirty. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. So I had an exam from two to three thirty today. So I, I couldn't go back to the office to do the class. So I'm my uni. So I'm doing the lesson from here. Do you guys want to see what the room looks like? Yeah. No. All right. This is what a university class look, room looks like. That's big. Oh, this is a That's tiny big. room. You should see the lecture rooms are massive. Mm -hmm. The whiteboard oh. is massive. Yeah. Oh, the whiteboard is massive, yeah. Whiteboard's so okay. big. Anyways, back to the topic. Where did I stop at? Um, writing. Yeah. So, NAPLAN writing, um, as you guys, sorry, as I was saying, it's for the government to see where schools all over Australia are ranked. So they want to see how each student at different schools 
are doing in each of the main subjects that they care about. So at the moment, just maths and English, right? And based on your NAPLAN results, they allocate funding in different ways. They change the curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. Do you guys understand? Yeah. So it <laughs> is not for that. So in NAPLAN writing, the government is looking for your English technical skills. So it doesn't even know what a technical skill is. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, use technical devices. <laughs> uh, well, kind of. So it's kind of like uh, to give you an example. Um, let me give you an example. Do you guys know much about watches? Yes, yes. I have okay. one. So, for I have example, one. I have a very like simple watch on my hand, right? I have a Casio watch. Do you have you guys seen these before? Yeah. No. So they're like these really cheap Casio watches, right? These are technically very simple to make, right? If you look at it, the parts are really simple. But there's watches like Rolexes, right? The reason they're expensive is because they are the inter like the tiny parts inside are really, really complicated to make. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Or a be or a better example to, to give you guys is have you guys seen those sculptures that people make? Like those very famous artists? Yeah. 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 Okay, so I'll show you guys this. So Michelangelo sculptures. Oh yeah, I know him. So for example. Um opera, opera <laughs> realistic sculpture. Yeah, like oh. these are very strange sculptures, but why do they all look so weird? But this is a super realistic sculpture, right? Or hyper realistic painting. Have you guys seen on TikTok or like on YouTube where people like say, is this a photograph or a painting? Yeah, we've got some in like I used to do a um art and crafting. There's loads of like realistic paintings there. Yeah. So basically the these are hyper realistic paintings, right? To paint one of these paintings is a really, 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 really hard. Is it? Yeah. It is really hard, right? It's really hard because you need to know exactly, you need to know about shading, you need to know about colors, you need to know about light, et cetera, et cetera, right? But for example, this painting, this hyper-realistic painting, will it sell for a lot of money? Yeah, it would cost a lot. No, yeah, not really. Cost... Hyper-realistic paintings, people don't really care. And on another example, there's a very famous young artist who I think was pretty young, so kind of like you guys, Jean-Michael Basquiat. I'll show you his painting. This guy. So this is some of his painting. Is this painting very complicated? No. Well, kind of. No. But guess how much these paintings sold for? These famous paintings sold for millions of dollars. So for example, what I'm saying is this painting might be more creative than this painting. But this painting has more technical skills. So Naplan is looking for this painting while Gate is looking for this type of painting. Do you guys understand? Yeah. So what they're trying to say is in, in Gate writing, they're not marking you for your punctuation, grammar, or spelling, right? That's not what they're marking you for. They're yeah. marking how creative you guys are. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So here's my next question. What does it mean to be creative, Fatima? Um... To use ideas that other people wouldn't think about. Yeah, you're pretty much on the uh, on the, on the mark, uh, like on the on the on the on the mark. Well, what do you think, Harinesh? What does it mean to be creative? Okay. There's no wrong answer. What do you think it means? The things that were in the fantasy? Mm, kind of. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think, Ian? What does it mean to be creative? Um, To think up of new things. Yep. Um, fair enough. Okay. Here's my question. How about a different question? What shape are tires or wheels? 
Um, circles. Yes, circles, sir. right. Yeah. If I were to ask you to create, a, a, if I were to ask you to design a creative tire, what shape would it be? Um, a square. A square. A triangle. A star. That's your octagon. A octagon. An octagon. All right. Now imagine this. Imagine I bought a car with triangle wheels. How would that car ride feel like? Very bumpy. <laughs> yeah, right. Like Maybe. after a few meters, my car's axle will break, right? Yeah. So, so creative means to be different. It means to be unique. It means to do things that have not been done before or attack a problem in a different way, correct? Yes. But is it always good to be creative? No. No, no not really. Interesting. Can you guys give me an example of when creativity was very successful? Art, some art. Art, what about technology? For example, do you guys remember what type of phones your mom and dad used to have when they were like younger? Samsung. Yeah, yeah they used to have those like brick phones, right? With the keyboards on uh, it, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, so imagine this. So the most popular phone when I was growing up. So when I was in high school, this is the phone that all the cool kids had. So I'll show you what it looked like. Wow. So it was used to be called a Blackberry. Have you guys heard of this? No. So this phone here, the, these phones, they were the coolest phone of all time. So all the presidents of America had them. All the rich business people had them. These were like the really cool phones. How much did it cost? Sorry? Yeah. How, How much, much did they cost? I, I don't remember because I just know 56? that it was very expensive. That's not much. Sorry? It says, it says they're 53 and 54 and 56 on there. Uh, yes, but th those are the, the, the prices now, right? Uh, let me show you this iPhone. When During the time when people just had Blackberries, right? What did yeah. Apple do? They released a full touchscreen phone that was really beautiful like this, right? So what, yeah. what happened? Was that really creative? Mm, so yeah. It so it completely changed the game. And Apple became a huge company because of these, right? Yeah. Another example. Uh, so another example of Apple was: Do you guys remember what old laptops used to look like? Yeah, Not really. They had, like, small. They had like um. You. They were like laptops, basically. You had to. They were separate, weren't they? Yeah. So for they example, the, the this is what laptops used to look like. They used to be really thick and chunky, right? Like this big, right? Guess what Apple did? Apple released this MacBook Air. So they released a, a laptop that was so thin that you could put it inside an envelope. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you guys know what people used to listen to music in? A Walkman. Yeah, I know one yeah. of these. These clunky old devices, right? Guess what now Apple have... released? iPod. iPod, right? IPod. So this this is like so Apple's a very creative company that really changed the game. So is it good to be creative when you're someone like Apple when you design yes. things? Yeah, it is like awesome. real. So now here's my final question to everyone. Here's my final question to everyone. My final question is: Do you guys think people are born creative, or do you think they become creative? They become. Um, All right. So put your hands up now if you think people are born creative, or sorry, yeah, if, if you think people are born creative. So I don't see any hands up. By the way, Eldo, can you hear us? Abimel, can you hear us? Abimel. Is he in here? I don't know. I don't think they are. But Guru says you can hear us, right? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So uh, what do you guys think? Is there anyone here who thinks people are born creative? Okay, I don't think there's anyone here. So does that mean all of you guys think people become creative? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I kind of disagree. And the reason I disagree is obviously, for example, obviously if you work hard and if you study hard and stuff, you can learn how to be creative, right? But because in your class, are there students in your class who even if they don't study that hard are always the smartest kids in the class? Not really. There's no one there like that? Mine, in mine there is. Yeah, in my school, in my school as well, like in all the schools I've been to, there's always uh, one or two kids who, even if they don't, I mean, they do try hard, 
But even if they don't try too hard, they're always the smartest kids in the class. How about this? Are there kids in your class who are always the fastest kid in the class? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, in, in real life, are people, people born with the height they get? No. No. Yeah? As in, you know, what I mean is that, for example, I'm, I'm 22 years old now, right? Can I change my height? No. 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 So I do think that people are born with different skills and different abilities. And I do think that some people are born more creative. So some people in this class will actually be way more creative and others will need to learn how to be creative. Do you guys understand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here is my tip. Here's, my, here's what I'm going to do. I have a cheat code. I know three tricks that can trick the marker into believing that you guys are creative. Would you guys like to know those cheat codes? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, Be very careful now. If, if you guys are against cheating or if you don't want any cheat codes, you can leave now. But for those of you who would like to know these tricks, you can stay on. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Oh, we have a new student. Louise, can you hear us? Yes, we can. Awesome. Awesome, Louise. Um, you did miss the first half of the lesson, yeah. but what you can do is later, you can go on YouTube. We have been live streaming it there. So okay. you can watch the first half later as well. Yeah. Sorry, just oh. sorry, just a quick interruption. Uh, have we got yeah. any learning material? Yes, yes. So I'll just send it again in the chat for those of you who missed it as well. So there's a few students who missed it, but it should be in the chat right now. Did you get it? Yeah. The, the learning material, is it is by paper or it will be sent uh, by mail? But, so it'll be online. So everything will be online. Oh, okay. So um, are you able to see this link that I've just shared in the chat? Uh, uh, okay, let me have a look. Yeah. Uh, which one not sure? No, Shiny, to access logging or? No, okay. So what I will do is maybe after the class, I can send it as well. Okay, that um, would be good. Yeah, yeah. but th this is what the learning material for this term looks like. So this uh, is how you do it. Uh, all right. So we, we, you'll be going through this uh, booklet for the lessons each week. Okay, all right, thank you. Perfect, no worries. And then um, I'll, I'll also quickly share for the students who join slightly later where you can watch it on YouTube if you do miss a lesson. Okay, thanks. So if you go into YouTube and so if you go into YouTube, uh, just search up Loyola Tutoring and there should be in the video. So term four, week one, right now it's live streaming. So you can just go through and watch that as well. Okay, sure. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So um, let's, where were we? All right. The three cheat codes. So Here's the cheat code number one. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Rule number one. Oh, actually, here's the title. Let you see. So in your notebook, you should write this down. Okay. Rule number one. Don't don't write about the oops literal image. Okay. So. I'll give you a few seconds to write that down. And then when you're ready, we can go through it. Can you repeat it? Yep. So don't write about the literal image. Okay. All right. So what does that mean? So I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's take a look at this. So when I did the, when I did the gate exam, I'll show you the, what the topic that I got. So when I did the gate exam, the, the, the topic was basically this, right? Yes. This was back in 2016. How old were you guys in 2016? Um, four. Whoa, that makes me feel really old. 
Wow. Okay. So in 2016, I did the gate exam and this was a topic I got. Okay. It was keys. What most kids did and what most kids will write about, they'll write about a key that they found to a treasure chest, or they'll write about a key that they found to, you know, from their, from their attic, which opens this mysterious door that was locked. They'll write about a key that their grandfather gave them in their inheritance and they're to find out what the key was meaning for useful for. So the, everyone will write a story about an actual key. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Now the problem is every year there'll be 6,000 or 7,000 students doing the gate exam. And if there are 7,000 students doing the gate exam and all 7,000 students will pretty much get the same topic, isn't it pretty likely that everyone will write the same three, four stories? Mm. yeah yeah have you guys heard of the thought experiment about the monkeys on a typewriter yeah have you guys mm. heard of it so basically the, uh, the the thought experiment is um if you have an infinite number of monkeys and you give them all typewriters eventually they'll write random keys and they will eventually write down the entire shakespeare novels or plays I'm not calling you as monkeys, okay? Don't, don't take offense. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have 7,000 students, all of them have the same topic, most of you will write about the same topic or the same few stories. So how can you go around that? And that's why you don't write about the literal image. So you need to talk about the topic. But what I want you guys to think about is, what could the topic represent? So what does keys represent to you guys? Like locked door. Locked door. Yeah. What else? Or it, like, it could, it could be for new beginnings. Sorry. Like open to new beginnings. Uh, sorry. Could you say that again, Aya? You can open a door to freedom. Okay. Door to freedom. Right. Okay. Like for example, escaping. You need a key. Right. Awesome. What else, Fatima? What do you think a key could represent? Um. Um. You have a problem in life and you need a certain key to help you get through it. Kind of like a solution, right? It opens things up. So if you think about it, if you, th if you think really deep about it, basically, what do we lock away? We lock away good things, right? Things we want to be protected, right? Where do we put our money? In a big bank safe, right? Where do yeah. we put, why, why do we lock our houses? Because we have our possessions inside. What do we lock our doors? Because we have our family inside, so we don't want thieves to come and attack us. So keys, like a lock protects things. And what does a key do? It opens things for us. Do you guys understand? Yes. Um, so um, basically, back to, back to this topic, how can you write about it? So what I did, I, I was a very cringy student. I was uh, I was a very silly student, but um, again, I did really good in creative writing. So maybe this works um, because the teachers clearly liked it. But what I talked about was I talked about true love. Oh, okay. So I, at that time I was reading Percy Jackson series. Have you guys read Percy Jackson? Mm. Yeah. So I was really into Greek mythology and Percy Jackson series and stuff. So apparently in Greek mythology, Basically, the story is that um, all, hu uh, all humans were born as four-legged creatures, okay? And they had four legs, right? They had four arms. They had two heads. They had four eyes, four ears, two mouths, etc., etc. Do you guys understand? And they were really powerful creatures. So Zeus got jealous, and he sent a lightning bolt and split the four-legged creatures into two two-legged creatures. And the Greek mythology says that we're forever looking for our other half or soulmate. And together, when we find our soulmate, we'll be so powerful together that we can even destroy the gods, essentially. Do you guys understand? Yes. What I said, what my story was, basically, I said about, I said about two lovers and they both have a, you know, they both have a great amount of potential. They could change the world. They could do a lot of cool things. But it's only when they find someone who they truly love that they can open themselves up and be more comfortable and realize their best self. For example, when you are around people you, who love you, right? For example, your mom and dad or your siblings, don't they inspire you to be, become better? Yes. Yeah. So they tell you, oh, study hard or do this, do that. 
And sometimes it might seem a bit strict, but it's for your best uh, potential, right? It's for you to become the best version of yourself, right? Yeah. So basically, mm-hmm. I wrote a story around that. And I said that these people, their love unlocks our best potential. And then our love and our um, you know, personality would unlock their best potential. So I said that that is like that love was a key. The love love was a key to success and making the world a better place. Do you guys understand? Yes. yes. So did I talk about the topic keys? Yes, my story included keys. But would you guys think my story was different from everyone else? Yes. Yes, because my whole story was not about actual keys. Do you guys understand? Yes. I talked about what keys could represent. Any questions? No. Uh, Haranesh, any question? Louise, do you understand? Sorry, my daughter's name is Shemalise. Oh, sorry. Shemalise, do you understand? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So uh, that's what rule number one is. Rule number one is don't write about the literal image. But there's a warning that I want to tell you guys. There's a quick warning. The warning is the teacher gives you guys a topic to write about. So for example, they've given you a topic of keys. If you don't write about the topic at all, what do you think happens to your mark? I go to Dan. Yeah, you pretty much get zero because it's the equivalent of going to McDonald's and ordering an ice cream and they give you a burger. Is that what you asked for? No. No, so you won't get any marks. You should think about your topic as salt, like salt. So here's an example. When your mom or dad makes dinner and they don't put any salt in your dinner, would the food taste good? No. Not really? No, actually no. no. But imagine before your mom and dad gives your dinner, they take a whole teaspoon and put salt on your food. How would your food taste? Disgusting. Yeah. Really? <laughs> you, you can't have it, right? So what? Why? why do we add salt? If you add a little bit of salt, it makes the whole food more flavorful. Do you guys understand? Yes. Similarly, think about your topic like salt. You need the topic, but if you make the whole story just based on your topic, you'll be just like everyone else. But if you don't use the topic at, at all, you won't get any marks. So you need to find that perfect balance. Do you guys understand? Mm-hmm. Any questions? Am I speaking too fast? No. <laughs> okay. Let me know if I'm speaking too fast because I'm, I, I, a lot of people have told me that I speak really fast. So I'll slow down if you don't understand. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So here's another example. I'll give you guys two minutes to think about something to write. All right. The topic is this. Light bulbs. I'll give you guys two minutes in silence to think about what you would write about. You don't have to write a whole story. Just write down an idea for a story, what you write about. Or you don't have to write, you just have to think about something, like brainstorm. Do you have your hand up, Fatima? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. By the way, while we're waiting, um, Lu- Louise, would you be able to change your name to your daughter's name so I can... Um, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. 
Sure. Or if you just tell me her as how to spell her name, I'll fix it now. From that would be great. Shamali, S H A M I L Y Z. So S H A M L Y. S H A M I L Y Z. M I L Y Z. Z. Okay. Shamalise. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. One more minute, guys. All right. Okay, so who's got an idea? Hannah. Uh, what would you write about if that was your topic? I'm not really sure. I'm just thinking about someone having an idea or something. Good. That's not too bad. What do you think, Fatima? What would you write about? Same thing. Yeah? Aya? Like, um, oh, sorry, but sorry, Fatima, what are you saying? Like an idea to change the world. Okay. Yeah. I. what would you say? Um, basically that, but like there would be a quote in the story as if a light bulb turned on. Mm, okay. Shamalis. Uh, like someone's really smart or animal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Haranesh, what would you think? What would you write about? Any idea, Harnish? Okay, what about you, Bruce? Okay. Um, so there's this girl who's up by social anxiety and she's very sad. Yeah. And, and so she's her. So she, she hasn't gone out in so many days, but she needs food and is the food in the house. So she goes out, but she's too short um, to grab something off the shelves. So this other girl helps her, and she's like the light bulb, and then they become friends. Yep. So like she brightens up her life. Perfect. That's really good. That's really, really good. Awesome. So I'll give you an, I'll give you the story that the best student uh, sorry, the best story we got from this topic, and the story was basically about a small village, right? There's a small village in a poor country, and this this little village did not have any electricity, right? So when the sun rose, all the villagers would wake up, and the kids would go to school. The mom and dad, the mom would wake up and start making the food, and the dads in the village would have to go. Um, to the sea to fish for uh, fish that they would sell in the market. Do you guys understand? Mm -hmm. so, but then by, by afternoon when the sun set at six o'clock, all the kids could not study after that. So they had to get every st everything studied done before then. The moms had to do all the cooking and the cleaning and everything uh, that they could do in this poor village by six o'clock. The dads had to do all the fishing and fixing and everything that they could do by six o'clock. Because by then it was dark and they couldn't really do much work with the fire lamps and things like that. One day, the, all the villagers came together and they asked their local politician for electricity. And finally, they got electricity and light bulbs. Once they got light bulb and electricity, the kids could spend all night or all evening studying for their exams. So they started to do really well in school. The mom and dad, the moms, could spend the night cleaning the house, but also fixing clothes or making little things that they could sell in the market with their husbands. The dads could spend the all day fishing. And in the afternoon, they can now spend that time fixing their objects. So now they have more time to do fishing and selling. So over time, this village became more rich. The kids became more educated. 
and the families started to prosper and they became successful. And it's all because of a simple light bulb. A light bulb that every day when we go into a room, so we switch on and we don't even think about how powerful it is. You understand? Yeah, that's a really good story. That's a really good story, right? Thoughtful one. Sorry? It was a thoughtful story. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So that story was really good because it, it included the topic of a light bulb, but it wasn't really about a light bulb. The story was about a village and how a light bulb changed the village. Do you understand? Yeah. Awesome. So that was an example of how you could do it. We have a new student with us. Hi, Alicia. Can you hear us? Yeah. Awesome. You're excited. Are you new to Loyola? I'm not. Did, did you come? Last time. Sorry? I joined last term. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And are you doing all online this term? Pardon? Are you doing all online this term? No. I'm okay. also to the PR orders. Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. Um, so basically today's class will be the exact same as a PR orders class, Alicia. So you yep. can join if you'd like, but um, if you're coming to face-to-face -face class, it'll be the exact same. It doesn't matter. Okay. My cousin does PR orders. Oh, who's your cousin? Oh, sorry, sorry. You already mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Rule number two that I want to go through, I want to go through, is your, your story must be feasible. Your story must be feasible. So let me explain. Actually, I think this will take a bit of time to explain. Would you guys like your five minute break now and then we'll continue the two rules after your five minute break? Yeah, sure. So come back at exactly five or five. Go use the bathroom if you want to use the bathroom. Get a drink if you want to get a drink. Get a small snack if you want to get a small snack. But come back at 505 where we'll resume the session, okay? Okay, all right. 
Hello. 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 Hi. All right, welcome back. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so the next rule of creativity that I'm going through is that your story must be feasible. So what does it mean to be feasible? It's kind of like um, this. Is it to be real? Kind of. <laughs> it's kind of like this. Like there's three, have you guys heard of the word? Have you guys seen this before? So I'm pretty sure in maths, you would have learned this. You would have learned something like this. So this here is zero. This here is one. So what event, can you guys name me an event that has a probability of zero? Um, zombie apocalypse. Sorry? A zombie apocalypse. It could happen. I'll go to school tomorrow. For example, something that could never happen is the like sun. Sorry, Haven. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I couldn't hear anything. Okay. Mm. So. Something that can never happen is nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. So for example, in physics, we know that the fastest thing that, fastest speed anything can travel is the speed of light. So we know that nothing can ever travel the faster than the speed of light. So the probability of something traveling the faster than the speed of light is? Zero. Zero. What's one thing that will definitely happen? The sun will come up. Um, yeah, or what if the world explodes, I don't know, for some reason. That's not likely, but that, but that's like really, really unlikely, but like it's not impossible though. <laughs> this is definitely likely. This that's is 100% likely. And not likely. So when you coin, ro co um, toss a coin, you will either mm. you get a heads, a tails, or a land on the side. Is that definitely going to happen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 And right in the middle, you have something like this. Right in the middle, where 0 0.5, you have a heads. So getting a heads in a coin toss. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Okay, so to understand feasible, I want you to learn three words really quickly. Possible, I want you to, I want you to learn the words, the, the following words. Possible, plausible, probable. I only chose these words because they're rhyme and it looks really cool. But is it possible for me to become an NBA player? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's possible. Yes. But do you ever see that happening ever? No. No. Yeah, exactly. Is it plausible that I, that Loyola becomes the biggest tutoring company in Perth? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 50, I mean, it's, it's like in between, right? It's not like impossible, but it's not like, you know, we know it's definitely going to happen, right? Yes. Is it probable that there will be, there'll, there will be an online class next week on Friday by Loyolo? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. It's yes. very, very likely to happen. Do you guys understand? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Your stories must be feasible, so it must be plausible mm -hmm. or probable or above. Do you what understand? does feasible mean? So it means like something that is likely to happen. It could happen, right? Yeah. So let me see the let me find the exact definition. Excuse me. Yeah. I can't see the shared screen. Yeah, one second. <laughs> So this, this, this is the definition of feasible. So feasible is possible to do easily or conventionally. It's likely or it's probable. Okay? No. So what I'm trying to say is this. Have you guys read the Harry Potter series? Yes. yes. Not read. Yeah. I've watched it. Or I watched, watched the Harry I'm watching it. Is that is is that series realistic? Like, does that happen in real life? No. 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 Just but a movie. Is, are the events in the story plausible? Like, you could. I'm sorry, probable. As in, it could happen. So, for example, if Voldemort and Harry fights, Voldemort is a stronger wizard, and Voldemort could win. Is yeah. that is that probable? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right? So do you see how those things make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So this is what happens with a lot of young students. And actually, a lot of students. You start doing your writing. And the last five minutes, the teacher's like, all right, everybody, five minutes left. You're like, oh, what? Five minutes left? I'm only halfway through. So then you quickly mm -hmm. rush the and you're like, oh, suddenly they used the magic ring and destroyed all the other wizards. And uh, you know, so it's all a dream. Right? Yeah. Have you guys done that? Oh, no. 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 Yes. no. So, those, not that, ending, that, ending is not, that ending is not feasible. It's not likely to happen. It doesn't make any much sense. I want the problems in your stories and the solutions to the problems to be realistic, as in it could happen. Do you guys understand? Yes. Even if there is magic involved, I still want the magic to be realistic. For example, they just don't use magic to solve everything. The characters have to grow or become better to solve the problems. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll give you an example between the two. Last term, we had a topic and it was kind of thing about sports. One student wrote a story about a boy who was being bullied. So he joined the sports team at school. And by the end of the year, he became so good that he won the school sports, sports carnival. Is that probable? Is that possible to happen? Yeah. 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 Yes. The other student wrote the same story about a boy who was being bullied in class. So he joined the school sports team. He trained really hard. And at the end of the year, he got into the Olympics and he won the Olympic, to, uh, Olympic gold medal. Is that plausible? Yes. Yes. No. Do you really think you can become an oh, Olympic no, champion no. in one year? No. Yeah. So that's not plausible. Oh, maybe. Well, that's unlikely. It's not impossible. Very, very unlikely. So we don't want stories that are unlikely. Do you guys understand? Yeah. So the reason is because stories must make sense. If the story is unlikely to happen in real life, it would be very boring to watch the story. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the last rule is your story must have a message or a moral. Okay. Your story must have a message or a moral. So to talk about this, I want to talk to you guys about the human brain and why it's so powerful. Do you guys agree that the human baby, the human baby, when it's born, is by far the most useless thing ever? Yes. Yeah. All the baby can yeah. do is cry, the baby can go to sleep, the baby will poop its pants and pee its pants, right? Yeah. And yeah. Baby. The baby can't walk, the baby can't crawl, the baby yeah. can't eat by itself, the baby can't poop by yeah. itself. It needs help yeah. all the time, right? Yep. Yeah. Right? But at the yeah. same time, if you look at a baby cow, within hours, it knows how to walk, it knows where to get food, it knows how to take care of itself, it knows what to eat, what not to eat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you understand? Yes. Do other animals have to go to school to learn things? No. 
No, okay. right? The tiger doesn't go to school to learn how to eat animals, does it? No. Right? The the squirrel doesn't go to school to learn where to hide the nuts and fruits. No. Yeah. No. The reason is animals, when they're born, inside their brain, they already know how to survive. It's called instinct, right? Yeah. Humans don't. For example, when Haven was a baby, he was like, oh shiny object let me go touch it and his mom's like no haven that's fire don't touch it he had to learn it the hard way right uh, or when ian saw the electric wire he's like oh yummy and he went to take a bite his dad had to stop him and say no you'll get shocked really right? no no i'm making these up obviously i don't know um, those were his babies. but obviously for example obviously your parents had to tell you not to bite an electric wire right yes but you didn't know that when you were born did you what happens when you bite an electric wire? You get electric shock or something like that. Exactly, you die. Yeah. So that's why you should bite one. So you got some things. Humans are really cool because we can learn from the mistakes of others. I and mean, we learn these things by stories. So I'll give you an example why humans are so powerful with stories. Ready? I'm going to name, now don't cheat, so don't write anything, but I'm going to name 10 objects. Okay. And I want to see how many of those 10 objects you guys can remember. Are you guys ready? Okay. If you guys cheat, this won't be fun. This won't be interesting. All yeah. right. Ready? Yep. Vitamins. Lamp. Sandwich. Dishes. Treat. Tire. Rose. Bottle. Shoes. Okay. I have put a couple of those. All right. How many of you remember three of those words? Me. Me. Anyone know four of those words? Me. Five of those words? I don't. I um, can't count. Me. Me. You remember Six of those bad. words? I have bad memory. Okay. So, so that was pretty hard, right? Now, I'm going to say those words again. I'm going to say those words again, but I'm going to tell it to you in a story. Ready? Yeah. Hi, my name is Eldo. And today, wait, is your name Eldo, by the way? No, my, that's my dad's name. My name oh, what's your name? Abimel. Sorry? Abimel. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hi, my name is Abimel. And today when I woke up, I took my vitamins. I then went and turned off the lamp in my room that I forgot to turn off last night. I went into the kitchen and ate a sandwich and I then washed my dishes. My dog was there, so I gave him a treat. And then I walked outside to see that my cycle's tire was punctured. So I walked outside, took a rose and put it inside a bottle and left it on the dining table. I then went on to put on my shoes. Okay, how many of those words do you remember now? Nothing. Six. Tire. Dishes. Tire. Sandwich. Lamp. Rose. Lamp. Lamp. Sandwich. Rose. On dining table. No, there's no table. <laughs> do, you see, do you guys see how you remember a lot more words now? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know. And that's because that's because that's because humans are very very powerful at remembering stories, right? So when you guys write your own stories, you need to have a message or a moral. That way, your story becomes more interesting. It becomes, you know, interesting to read. Inter it becomes a higher level of a story. Do you guys understand? Yes. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now that you know these three rules. Um, let's get, let's jump into maths now. All right. Are you guys ready? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Do you have any, do you guys have any questions about these three rules of creativity, by the way? Yes. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't know. What's okay. the writing topic? Oh, the writing topic. I'll show it to you as well. Okay. Because the teacher did mm -hmm. show it to us next last class. What? Teacher didn't show it to us last class. That's what I said. Yeah, I know. Someone said what? What are you doing? 
So this is the topic. Wait a minute. There you go. Oh, oops. There you go. That's a topic. Can you see it? Something. Uh, some risks are worth it. Okay. Yeah. That's the topic for this week's writing. I took a screenshot. Yeah, I'll send it in the WhatsApp group chat as well. Yeah. Accidentally, accidentally to my left. Okay. All right. So, do you guys have any questions? Any other questions about writing for this week? Nope. Yeah. How do no you questions? do? No. Where do you do your homework? Sorry. Where do you do your homework? Oh, you do it. You do it in your book. So you do your writing for this week. And then next week, when I ask at the class, I'll give you guys the email to send me your writing. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now let's get started on to maths. Um, here is the first sheet. You guys have... 10, oh, oops, actually, let me see how many questions you have. You have six questions. I'll give you guys 10 minutes to do these questions first. All right, your time starts now. 10, 10 minutes to do these questions. What if we already did them during the- Yeah, we already did it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, so guys, so today's class is actually for the online only students. So if you guys have done it in Pierre Waters or Yokai, this class is just for revision. So obviously it would be the repetition of the same class. Can we just no, I want ice cream. Okay. Do you know the double Please make one? Sure you don't I want that Thank you, guys. We can hear about your ice cream stories. All right, 10 minutes. Excuse me. Could you scroll it in a little bit? Sorry? Could you scroll it in? Like zoom, zoom in? in? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.
Excuse me. Can't see anything. Can you see anything now? No. Okay, so maybe check the live video on YouTube because I can't, I think there might be an issue with your computer. Okay, you guys have three more minutes for this question and then we'll move on to the next few questions. Okay. Could I leave and join again? Sorry, what'd you say? Could I leave this and join again? Sure, if you want to. All right, let's go on to the next set of questions. Oh, one second. Hello? Hello. I'm back and it's working. Hi. Hi, all. Okay, so you have another, you guys have another 10 minutes to do these questions.
I can't see the question. Can you still have the paper? Same, I can't see the question. What? Okay, if you can't see the question, please don't restart the class, guys. As I mentioned, go to YouTube. We have a live stream, so you should be able to see the questions there, okay? So for those of you who can't see the questions, please join here and do the question. Otherwise, please don't disrupt the class. Thank you.
All right, let's go. Let's get started. Are you ready? Yep. All righty. Okay. Yes. So let's go through some of these questions. Question number one. Um, Melvin's catering company is catering for 1,257 people at a wedding function. There are 239 vegetarian meals and 608 non-vegetarian meals ordered. Melvin also noted that, noticed that although dessert was provided to all those who purchased a meal, there were 76 people who purchased dessert alone. How many people did not have dessert? Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. By the yep. way, Harnish, are you in India at the moment? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. That's why your internet's slow. That makes sense. That's right. Okay. Yes. So what you do is you do 1,357. Then you subtract 239. You subtract 608. And then you subtract 76. Because these are all the people who ordered a meal. Do you guys understand? Yeah. And when you yeah. do all of that, what do you get? Uh, two. 334. Perfect. 334. All good? Everyone understand? Yeah. yeah. Any questions? I am. Um, I got a question. Yeah. I just added 239 plus 608 plus 76 and then minus it from one. That makes sense as well. It's like it's like um eating a burger upside down. They still work. Right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, next question. Um, question number two. How many times greater was the amount of dessert only meals and the non-vegetarian meals? So how many vegetarian meals? Okay, this is a great question to learn how to be faster at maths or how to be faster at the questions. Are you guys ready to learn the trick? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here's the question. We know that it's 608 divided by 76. But obviously that's going to take a lot of time. So we need, I think the easier way to do the solve the question is just to do, is just to do 76 and multiply by each of the answers, right? And whichever one gives you 608, that's the correct answer, right? Yep. Yeah. So instead of doing each of the answers, have you guys heard of the infinite library problem? Nope. Yeah. Okay. There's this really famous maths problem. So it's basically like this. Uh, Let's just say you guys are at an infinite library. Well, it's not really infinite. It's just really, 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 really big. Okay. And all the books are put in chronological, very alphabetical order. And the task is for you to find a book written by Melvin. So the surname is Tom. So it starts with T, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how do you find this specific book by Melvin Tom? So what you do is you take the starting, so A, and you take the Z and you find the exact middle, and then you go there first. And when you get there, what letter will you see? Um, M. M, right. You'll be at the M section. So is, is the T, so now that we're at the M section, we know that T is on this side of the um, library, right? Yeah. So what you do is you take the M, yes. you take the Z, and you go to the very middle of that. And when you go there, what do you get? Let's just say W, right? So then you go to W and then you go M and then you go to the middle and you keep going to the middle and eventually you'll get to the T. So that apparently that's like that. I think it's something like that. I, I forgot the exact problem, but similarly for this question, what I would recommend is look at the answers. So there's six, seven, eight, and nine. So what's the, what's the middle number? Seven and eight. Yeah, so you just do seven. So you do 76 times seven, and what do you get? Seven times six is? Um, 49. 42. Uh, oh, 42, good. Oh, seven times six. Yeah, so 42. I was thinking of seven times seven. Yeah, and the four goes there, and seven times seven is? Um, 49. Plus two, sorry, plus four? Um, 53. 53, so we got five, three, two. So we know that it has to be eight or nine, correct? So yep. looking at five, three, two, I know that it has to be eight because you know it can't be nine. It can't be, it's pretty close by. So five, three, two plus 76, what do you get? So six plus two, quick. Six plus two, eight. 
Good job. All right. And seven plus three. Ten. Ten. Good. Plus one. Five plus one. It's six. six. Awesome. So six away. So the answer is? Eight times. Perfect. Good job. All right. Question number three. Uh, by the way, any questions so far? No. All right. Question number three. Alonso's bowl of chicken biryani is at 50 degrees Celsius. As soon as it leaves the stove, Alonso wants the food to cool down to 35 degrees Celsius before serving to the guests. The cooling takes place in a steady rate. Given it takes 10 minutes to cool down to 45 degrees Celsius, how much longer will Alonso have to wait before serving the guests? So it goes down by five degrees every how many minutes? 10. 10, Ten. perfect. So we need to go from 50 to uh, 35. How many degrees is that? 10. Uh, no, 50 to 35. Oh. How many degrees? Oh, 15. 15. So 15 divided by five is? Three. 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 And it takes 10 minutes per five minutes. So 10 times three is? 30. 30. So, so to break it down, it's kind of like this. You just do five minutes equal, oh, sorry, 10 minutes. 10 minutes is equal to five degrees Celsius. We need to get 15 degrees Celsius. So that means it is 30 minutes. Do you guys understand? Yeah. Because you do five, five times three gives me 15. So 10 times three gives me 30. Everyone understand? Yes. Do you understand, Fatima? Fatima, do you understand? Awesome. Do you understand, Shamalese? Shamalese, do you understand? Gorsis? Hayden? Yeah, I understand. Awesome, awesome. By the way, what are you doing in today's lesson, Mr. Hanson? Aren't you normally in our Wednesday class? No. Did you really miss me that much? You want to come to an online class as well, Haven? Hello? Me? Yeah, you. Who else is Mr. Hanson? Oh, that is so weird. <laughs> Sorry, who said that? Alexio. Oh, Alexio's jealous. Oh, Alexio. You're also, I mean, I'm going to call you Mr. Hanson. I'll say maybe, you know, second handsome, I guess. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. Um, well, anyways, let's get started. Let's continue. So question number four, if a number is chosen at random from one to 25 inclusive, what is the probability that a multiple of five is picked? So how many multiples of five are there from one to 25? Five. Five. And there is? 10. 15. 15. 20 and 25. So there's five numbers, right? So the answer is five out of 25, which is the same as one out of five. Do you guys understand? Yes. Okay. What is a composite number? Number. That can be times other than by itself and by one. Perfect. So nine is a composite number because it can be divided by three and it can be divided by one, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Twelve is a composite number because it can be divided by one, it can be divided by two, it can be divided by three, it can be divided by four, it can be divided by six, and it can be divided by twelve, right? Yeah. yeah. So how many composite numbers are there between one and twenty-five? Twelve. Are you sure? No. The easier way to do it is look at how many prime numbers there are. Is one a composite number or a prime number? Prime. prime. One is not a prime prime number or a composite number. So you start with two. So there's two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-three, and that's it, right? So we have how many numbers was that? Nine. Nine, nine prime numbers. Wait, so what's 25 minus nine? 16. So the answer is 16 out of 25. Do you guys understand? Yep. Yeah. An odd number is picked. How many odd numbers are there between one and 25? 12. 13. Oh, 13. Because you have to include 25 as well. So it's 13 out of 25. Do you guys understand? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Question number, by the way, these questions are really old Loyola question. This was the first batch of students that we had. So we just, because we had a really small class back then, I just made all the questions after the students and they helped me make some of the questions into more funnier questions. So Vishnu made 1.35 kilos of butter chicken. He couldn't hold himself, <laughs> he couldn't hold himself back. So he ate 0.45 kilograms of butter chicken. How much butter chicken is left? Pretty easy, zero, right? Zero, zero point nine. Zero point nine. Zero point nine. Zero point nine kilos. Okay. So David's toothpaste is hundred and seventy-five grams. This morning, his dad used five point seven grams. His mom used five point nine grams. His sister used six point three grams, and David used six grams. How many grams are left? One hundred and fifty-one point one. Are you sure? Yeah. Let's test it out. So 1.5 minus 5.7 minus 5.9 minus 6.3 minus 6. And the answer is? 1.5. Yeah, 151.1. Awesome. All right. Edna and Anne weighed themselves on a scale in science class. If Edna weighed 75 kilos and Anne weighed 87 kilos, how much would it show on the scale if they both got the scale at the same time, given that the scale underestimates by 25%? Whoa, this is a hard question. Do you guys know why it's a hard question? Why? Because this means that I think, so basically, I'm, wait, I'm not sure if this question was an error, but this question is basically saying that they actually don't weigh 75 kilos. So they, sorry, they actually weigh 75 kilos. So when they get on the scale, it, it actually underestimates by 25 kilo percent. So you reduce it by that. So what you do is 75 plus 87. What do you get? 162. 162. Are you sure? And what's one quarter of 162? Um, I don't know. Divided by four is 40.5. So then what you do is 162 minus 40.5. And what do you get? Um, 121.5. Perfect, fact, though. Do you guys understand? Yes. Fatima, do you understand? Yep. Alicia and Mr. Second Handsome, do you understand? Yes. Oh, look at that smile on his face. <laughs> All right, what about the rest of you guys? Abimel, do you understand? Aranesh? Yes. Hannah? Mm -hmm. David? Yep. Shemelise? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. A triangle has a perimeter of 25 centimeters. If two of its sides are equal and the third side, oh, okay. The third side are, and two of the sides are equal and the third side is five centimeters, more than the equal sides, what is the length of the third side? Okay. 15 Basically, centimeters. How do you find perimeter? Um, uh, um, add up all the sides. Yeah. So two sides are equal. So we, we know that one side is X, second side is X, and the third side is X plus five, correct? Five. So we know that 25 is equal to x plus x plus x plus 5. So what you then do is you divide, um, you divide, you take the 5 away. So you know that 20 is equal to x plus, so it's equal to 3x because it's x plus x plus x. And what's 1x equal to? 20 divided by 3. Um, that's not possible. It is. It's the main to two. Basically, it's six and two thirds. Uh, just leave. Did he just leave? Hmm? The teacher. No. Oh. Did he leave? No. 
Yeah. All right, guys, I got kicked out, I got kicked out of the Zoom class. Oh, shit. I think Alexia got really angry that I didn't call him Mr. Handsome. He sent us like <laughs> much easier. All right, let me share screen again. Okay, so one side is going to be six and six and two thirds. So the third side should be. Actually, did I make a mistake somewhere? X, x and equal to the third side is five more than the equal sides. No, it should be x plus five. So the third side should be six plus uh, five. What's six plus five? It should be 11 and two thirds. I think the rounded answer should be 12, essentially. But let's see if that makes sense. 12, so one side is 12. The other side says, what's 12 minus five? Um, it's seven. Seven, six. No, it is seven. plus seven. Oops, seven plus seven. And what does that give you? 26. Uh, yes, 26. So that's the closest one. 15 doesn't make sense because it's too big. Let's try nine. Um, nine plus... What's nine minus five? Four. Four. What does that give me? 17. 17. Yeah, so clearly 12 is the closest answer. I think this was a typo. This number should be something else. It shouldn't be 25, or this shouldn't be five. But do you guys understand? Yes. OK. How much older? All right, so that's pretty much the end of the lesson. We're pretty much towards the yeah. end. I want to quickly turn to uh, the homework for this week. So, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so for yes. this week, the homework is pages three to eight. Do all of three to eight. Do you guys understand? And then, do you guys know the writing topic? Yeah. Um, yeah. The writing topic is that, this one here. So make sure you do both of that, and I'll see you guys next week on Friday. Okay. All right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. No questions? No. No. Nope. Don't forget these two things, okay? I don't have my booklet in India. Oh, okay, okay, yes. So the link to the booklet is here. I'll send it again in the chat. One second. Um, let me zoom out. Let me send you the link. Copy. Okay, so everybody in the chat, I've just sent it. Do you guys see it? Yeah. Awesome. All right, it's in the chat. Okay, see ya. See ya. Okay, bye. 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 Hey, man, what song are you listening to? What? What song are you listening to? I can see you vibing to some music, just bopping your head. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> See ya. Bye. 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 Eve. Eve. Eve.